Hey everybody, welcome back. This is your messiest Ooh. wedding drama. Too good not to share. All of these are from the Charlotte Dobre YouTube subreddit. If you haven't followed that, what are you doing? Why not? Don't you love me? If you haven't subscribed to this channel, what are you doing watching my videos and not subbing? Why not? Am I the a-hole for causing a friend to lose guests for her wedding? Who rise for the honorable Judge Charlotte? You are be such a... <laughs> I'm 35 female and my friend R is 31 female. I've been very close with her for about four years. I'm married and she's engaged. R enjoys Spanish music and my husband is a well-known salsa dancer in his scene. We've taken her dancing a couple of times and the three of us have become pretty close. Recently, we all went to a salsa bar for my husband's friend's birthday party. R's fiance couldn't make it as he was working. During the night, R drank a whole jug of cocktails by herself and got pretty tipsy. This is where things got tricky. While I was on the dance floor with some girlfriends, my husband stood by our table. R approached him, placed her hand on his chest, and started running it down while shaking her hips. Shots. My husband was visibly taken aback and took a small step back. She laughed, then walked away. Is that funny? I don't see anything funny. And I am an expert in what is not funny. I saw this happen, as did a few others, but I didn't think too much of it at first since R had also been dancing a bit provocatively with other men, including one of the band members, despite being engaged. Okay, interesting. So is the guest for her wedding your husband by any chance? Felt a little uncomfortable. After that incident, my husband felt uncomfortable. <laughs> no, right? And decided to leave the party early. He later told me how uneasy the situation made him, especially because he's known to be a conservative dancer who strictly follows social dance etiquette, meaning no inappropriate touching. We agreed that I should have a conversation with R to address the issue. That'll be an interesting convo. When I reached out to her to meet in person, she kept postponing, so we eventually had a video call. During the conversation, I explained my husband's boundaries and reassured her that we knew that she didn't mean any harm. We laughed it off. She even offered to apologize. I told her it wasn't necessary. We just wanted to set boundaries for future interactions. We ended the call on what I thought was a good note. However, two days later, she texted me saying she was hurt that I would think she had other intentions. Well, other intentions is one thing, but like also you can have honorable intentions or no bad intentions, but like if you cross somebody's boundary and they tell you that you crossed a boundary, you have to respect that. She's not like accused using you of anything, it's just like, don't touch my man, you know? Then she dropped a bombshell. She uninvited both me and my husband from her wedding. We were shocked. My husband and I have been there for R and her fiance in many ways, from helping with the proposal to designing her wedding invites for free, and even vouching for her fiance's character in church so they could have a Catholic wedding. I tried calling R to explain, but she ignored me and her fiance followed suit. Interesting that the fiance is on her side when she was all up on somebody's man. Since we have mutual friends, some of whom I'm closer to, I had no choice but to let them know I was uninvited. A few of them have now decided not to attend the wedding in solidarity. I don't get why her husband is like, does he know the full extent of what she was doing? Here's where it gets more complicated. After our conversation, R started hanging out at the bar with my husband's friends. Initially, we decided not to tell anyone about what happened because we thought she might just be stressed due to the wedding. However, she started telling them I was very sensitive and insecure. Interesting choice of words. Which is why she decided to not have me at the wedding. Ah, interesting. She didn't tell them that you were on somebody's man. She conveniently left out the part where she inappropriately touched my husband. Of course she did, because it makes her look bad. People always leave out the parts that make them look bad. Uh, that's, that's not me, that's not me. Nice little cherry picking. Now I feel guilty that she's losing friends at her wedding. However, I felt I had no option but to explain why I was uninvited since she wouldn't communicate with me. Am I the a-hole here? I mean, obviously not, Bessie. It is up to your friends to choose to not go to the wedding in solidarity with you or to go to the wedding. You were just telling them the truth because she was spreading lies about you. I have an update. I had to tell one of my good 
friends, let's call her Freya. I told Freya what happened as she was invited to the wedding as well. She said she's not surprised by this behavior as R has tried to be a little funny with her husband. Oh, a little funny. She's just a goofy gal, eh? Just a goofy gal. Touching all up on people's husbands. Can I steal your husband? R and Freya met at a birthday party and she started teasing him in a playful manner. Her husband is a little quiet. She then added him on Instagram and tried chatting up with him. Ooh, he blocked her. She didn't want to let us all know because R is someone who's very friendly and is a social butterfly. And she felt maybe she was being a little conservative, but she said she didn't have a good feeling about R. She and her husband rarely attend any events with Freya in it. And if she does, her husband refuses to be there to avoid any sort of drama. They have chose not to attend the wedding as well. Ooh. Well, the truth always comes out, doesn't it? I love it when people who are just absolutely man crazy project and say that you're insecure because you don't want them touching your man. <laughs> when really it's like, I think the only insecure person here is the person who's going around trying to flirt with everybody else's husbands because it gives her some sort of validation that she can have them. She's trying to cover her by hiding what really happened to everyone. She's no longer a friend, so you shouldn't feel bad if you tell everyone the truth. If she loses people, that's on her. It's literally just the truth. And something tells me that a lot of other people, they had their own experiences with her doing the same thing. They don't like that. It's a pattern. She knew she acted inappropriately and didn't want her fiance to know all the details. So she quickly painted you as insecure. Yeah, I'm guessing that she didn't tell him. She's talking bad about you while you're simply telling the facts. As if that wasn't juicy enough, we have an update. The tea just keeps spilling and I'm here just glug, 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 glugging. Firstly, I do wanna thank everyone who left comments and advice and some pretty petty ideas that I almost executed. But your words gave me some peace and reassurance as I really felt like a horrible person when people started to boycott her wedding. So thank you for your kind words. I have an update for everyone. It's a little long, but bear with me as the details are pretty important. So I posted on my story about a week ago, but to give you a timeline, the drama actually kicked off about a month ago. Fast forward to just a few days ago and I get a text from R's fiance at 1 a.m. Interesting. Yes, you read that right, one in the morning. He's asking if my husband and I are awake because he has an emergency. Next thing I know, we're on a call. He starts asking us about a guy, let's call him D, a band member who frequently plays at the bar and asks for his number. Hmm, interesting. My husband knows of him and has mutual friends with D, but here's where it gets juicy. Turns out R's fiance caught her lying about where she was that night. She'd been hanging out at Dee's house, of all places, and lied about being there. And what was her excuse? Oh, she was just dropping off one of my husband's friends. R doesn't have a car and doesn't even drive, but she said she was just being a good friend because my husband's friend was drunk. But here's the kicker. This friend lives a good 40 minutes away from Dee's place. You do the math. Basically, she lied and said my husband's friend lives there. It was actually Dee's house. Sneaky. Apparently she was with D until 4 a.m. for drinks at his house alone. Did I mention D is married with two kids? His wife and children were conveniently out of town. Classy, right? I'd choose a different word, but sure, let's go with classy. But wait, there's more. The lies don't stop there. R's own bridesmaid caught her dancing inappropriately with D at the bar and kissed. The bridesmaid and groomsmen were close friends of both R and her fiance and have since been collecting receipts. Evidence that R has been emotionally cheating and lying to her fiance. Well, if the shoe fits, where there's smoke, there's fire. Who just dances all up on other people's husbands if it's not like normal behavior? for them. R eventually admitted to everything except sleeping with D, of course, because they didn't go that far, right? Her fiance wanted D's number to talk to him to confirm if what R said was true. We didn't give his number because we don't have it, but he found it anyway. Her fiance, he's done. Oh. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, so sad. He can't trust her anymore. He's even gone as far as talking to her parents and calling off the wedding. I mean, doesn't really surprise me. This isn't the first time she cheated. She was engaged before and cheated on her previous ex fiance as well. Goodness, someone shouldn't be in a relationship. This is exactly the kind of person you should not want your husband to be around. But then again, it's also like, if you trust your husband, nothing will happen. And he'll be just like your husband, OP, and be very uncomfortable. But like, who does that with someone else's like man and isn't sort of testing the waters? Just saying. Back to R's current fiance, despite everything, he's been graceful enough to tell people the split was mutual, trying to spare her from any public shame. 
shame. Well, that's nice of him. I mean, but clearly people know. And how does R repay him for this kindness? By taxing everyone she knows, claiming she called off the wedding because her ex-fiance is emotionally abusive. Oh, so she kind of does this a lot, eh? up and then tries to change the narrative by making herself the victim. Unbelievable. I guess that's easier than admitting you've been sneaking around till 4 a.m. at another guy's house, right? Remember what we said in a previous video that souls are never souls? Like they never admit that they're souls? Yeah, that's what makes you an soul. FYI. At this point, my husband and I decided to tell his friends the truth because of course R dragged their name into it too. And now that friend is angry because she was never that drunk and has never asked R for help, nor did R send her home at any point in time. She's ready to confront R for using her as an alibi. Honestly, I've had enough. I've been telling people what actually happened after the call because let's face it, R doesn't deserve protection when all she does is throw everyone else under the bus and try to fuck other people's husbands. Her ex-fiance tried to spare her some dignity, but she chose deflection over reflection. If her shady behavior is out in the open now, that's on her. And there you have it. I didn't have to lift a finger, wedding canceled. Her brides and groomsmen have all unfriended her, friends lost, and all because she couldn't keep her lies straight. Karma did the heavy lifting this time. It's not only because she couldn't keep her lies straight, it's because Let's say it with me. She couldn't keep her hands off of other people's husbands. That is so twisted, you know? Like, I can't believe that there are people out there that get off on like trying to steal somebody else's man. Yes, the man is at fault. Let's not forget that here. It seems like she'd rather go for married men than single men. <laughs> being also in a relationship herself. Maybe she's got a thing for it. Tickles her fancy. Mmm, love home wrecking. You are not the a-hole, my dear. And clearly, your inklings were right about her. Oh my God. Am I the a-hole for ending my friendship with my best friend of 25 years because of what she did during my wedding? <laughs> Am I the a-hole for ending my friendship with my best friend of 25 years because of what she did during my wedding? What'd she do, bestie? Strap in for a long one. I, 33 female, wed my husband, 32 male, three years ago. We'd been dating prior to our wedding for eight years. When I met my husband, Sam, my best friend, let's call her Laura, 32 female, advised me not to exclusively date him as I should keep my options open. Kind of backwards advice. Why is that? I remember how baffled I was at this because I never dated multiple men at a time and would exclusively date and remain in serious relationships with my exes. I would say the only way that you can tell a friend to keep your options open is if your friend is getting mixed signals from a guy and they aren't, you know, exclusively dating. That would be the time to be dating multiple people at once, you know, because it keeps you from getting obsessed. But if you're both being upfront with each other, you both like each other, there's no games whatsoever, then why would you sabotage a perfectly good relationship by dating other people? Fast forward to 2021, we planned a wedding during COVID as we felt financially ready to do so. Laura had known for years that Sam and I were planning to get married, but kept facing hardships throughout our relationship. Father passed away, his mother had a stroke, etc. My husband is the majority breadwinner in his family, consisting of four other people. A minor detail detail is that we are South Asian, so in our culture, sons live together. So I was joining a family of five. Due to COVID, I was able to tremendously financially save for the wedding events, and so was he. He proposed to me in April 2021, and by May, we were religiously married. At that time, my friend and I were on good terms. We had fallouts through the years because of her controlling behavior, but we decided that staying friends was more important. Laura and I went to the same elementary school, junior high school, high school, and college in New York. We were inseparable and everybody knew that. Laura was my bridesmaid and I planned a henna ceremony and reception in September of 2021. From May to September, I noticed Laura's behavior was starting to change and we stopped communicating as much. I was busy with wedding planning, so I didn't give it much mind. I had personally given her and her family an invitation card to my upcoming events and had asked her to constantly RSVP so I knew how many of her family members were coming, about seven of them. She didn't RSVP until two days before my reception. When I told her to RSVP to the henna ceremony, she claimed that I never told her about the event and would not be able to come. I screenshotted a conversation in a group chat with her and my other best friend proving I had told her and she had read the text. She said she must have forgotten. I sent her a link to the dress I wanted all bridesmaids to wear and she replied back saying if she asked anyone at her wedding to pay for outfits, they'd be furious at her. Okay. 
I told her that paying for six other bridesmaids dresses wasn't in my budget. Guys, the outfits were $34 on Amazon. She ended up coming to the ceremony. During this time, we had gotten into an argument where she said I was being very selfish and not taking into consideration that I was having everyone in the bridal party incur a lot of expenses. Welcome to having friends that get married. It's normal. She said she had to buy two new outfits, then on top of that, expect wedding gifts. This was my best friend complaining she had to get me a gift for the wedding. I told her it wasn't necessary. I wanted her there, and all I wanted was for all the girls to pick whatever outfit they wanted, but for it to be lavender. It kind of just sounds like she's looking for reasons to like either not attend your wedding or not like you. Both, both. After that, she complained I hadn't included her on any wedding shopping. In our culture, we're Bengali. The friends usually accompany in shopping, but because it was COVID, we only took my parents, his parents, and brother. We weren't even able to include my sister because she had a 10 month old and lives in Queens, New York, where my parents and I lived in Manhattan and we were traveling to New Jersey for bridal outfits. If it wasn't possible to bring my sister due to where she lived, it didn't make sense to pick up Laura from Astoria. In addition, everything we did was very fast. I knew what designs I wanted and got a custom bridal outfit. For gold shopping, also customary in our culture, we went two days before the wedding, conveniently scheduled the same day as our food tasting in Queens. I knew exactly what I wanted, so there wasn't much time spent for shopping. For everything else, my mom and dad drove me to stores, which we shopped while my mom was grocery shopping. I didn't make a fuss for anything in my wedding. All I asked were for the bridesmaids to show up. Like, I just don't really understand how she's like fussing about over, oh, like, you're making me buy sh Oh, like I have to spend money. Oh, like why didn't you invite me? I don't know, man. Like it's just a bit contradictory. My husband planned everything in our wedding. I barely did anything besides choose color schemes and pay for my half. Ooh, love that for you, bestie. A groom that plans the wedding. How do I send this huh? to Mike without sending it to Mike? <laughs> I never got a bridal shower because she said to my face that she didn't want to plan one. Guys, I'm so devastated that I will never experience a bridal shower. When I showed her my gold design, she said it was nice, but if I had seen the one her dad bought her, I wasn't aware that this was a competition. I mean, it's not for you. Everything is a competition, mother. For her wedding, she's divorced now, by the way. Her father paid for the wedding, gold, etc. I was single-handedly paying my portion for all three events Sam and I planned. We spent over $100,000 on our events as we had dreamt so, so many years of what we wanted. My goodness, she's being a little difficult, eh? It's a little jealous, a little controlling. The day before my wedding, she told Sam she didn't have a ride and if he could drop her off at the wedding. He was shocked as it made no sense that she'd asked the groom on his most important day. I offered her a spot in my limo in case she didn't have a ride, but she didn't accept the offer. Weird. What does she want to do in the car with your soon-to-be husband? Naughty, naughty. The wedding was beautiful and everyone had a great time. The day after the wedding, I Venmo my bridesmaids about 15 to $20. In the Bengali culture, the bride side holds the gate and demands the groom pays up if he wants to enter and wed the bride. It's a cute ceremony and just there for fun and games. I told Sam to have an envelope with $100 in singles. It's customary to have 500 plus, but as I didn't have any younger cousins and the only people holding the gate would be my friends who were all my age. Split into six, seven ways, it was just a small amount of money. Once again, it was a small fun event. When I Venmoed her, she sent it back to me and texted me saying she didn't want it. I told her it was just for fun, but she started to get angry and berate me since she didn't need money and to keep that. I once again sent it to her saying it wasn't my money and to have it, it was for my bridesmaids. But then she also complained about the cost of the dress and the cost of the gift. At last, she said, it's not rocket science. I don't want to do that. So guys, am I the a-hole? She sounds salty as f you got married. I'm just saying. Why is she so mad at you? You just got married. What's her problem? What's with this attitude? This is your best friend? Wow, I'm thinking she's just jealous of your relationship so she's acting like a child. I'd go low contact. Edit, not the a-hole. Why would you ask the groom to pick you up the day of the wedding? And then when he couldn't, now you're refusing a ride from the bride in a limo? Make it make sense. I was also thinking your friend probably wants your man and what she said about playing the field, not even doing the bare minimum for you as a maid of honor and then asking only the hubby for a ride to the wedding. Keep this woman away from you. She's not your friend. She's not. She wants your man. She wants your life. OP responds, we don't talk much since the wedding except for social events, since we have so many mutual friends. Recently, we went to our high school reunion and our other friend's wedding is next month. So unfortunately I can't avoid her, but yes, 
to low contact. Listen, we're not asking you to be a bitch, all right? We don't stoop to that level. We are cordial at social events. We say, hi, how are you? Oh my gosh, I love your dress. You look wonderful. Nice seeing you, bye. It's literally as simple as that. You just say hi, you're nice, and then you avoid them the rest of the night. <laughs> Another really good tip. I go to a lot of weddings where there's I hate. I'm sorry, there are. <laughs> Another really, really good tip is just look like you're having really, really deep conversations with everybody else. So if there's ever a point where they feel like, oh, like maybe I could go talk to them or something. You just look like, don't interrupt me right now. You know, I'm, I'm really having a very important conversation here. <laughs> you are not the a-hole, my dear. It is decided. Am I the a-hole for telling my older sister she can't be in my wedding anyway? I am having a severe dilemma about my wedding that will be taking place next September. My fiance Isaiah and I have been together since 2016. He proposed to me in 2022 at a Ramstein concert. We are finally able to afford our dream wedding. The problem is my older sister Kelly, 32 female, who's borderline narcissistic and believes the world revolves around her. She's embarrassed me, one-upped me in any way she can, and is very disapproving of my fiance and I getting married, as I will be the first out of my siblings to be wed. There are a few people I hate more on this earth than a one-upper. You can always tell like people who are secretly resentful of you by a one-upper. By that, I mean that they, you say something good that's happened to you and then they one-up you by saying something better or they don't let you have your moment of being like happy about something good that's happened. Kelly has come out of the woodwork and practically demanded that she be invited and become my maid of honor. I calmly told her no, as my best friend Liz is going to be my matron of honor as I was her maid of honor for her wedding. Kelly was absolutely fuming about this and demanded that Liz doesn't come. I again told her as they have a history that it wouldn't end well. I decided with stress flooding my mind to tell her that she wasn't invited to the wedding and I don't want her near it. Kelly, why can't I? Me, you have disregarded my feelings many times and you are disrespectful toward my fiance and I I won't have that energy on one of the most important days of my life. No, no lies, lies were, were told. told. Kelly has been disrespectful about a condition my fiance has and thinks of it as weird. I've told her on multiple occasions to drop it and she won't listen as she says, I'm just making an observation. It makes my blood boil every time she does this. Regardless, Kelly has gone to family in tears about not being able to attend or become my maid of honor. I'm in disbelief as Kelly has done this before when she doesn't get her way and it makes me feel like my problems don't matter in the slightest. My family has tried to explain to her it was my choice and to do something else on the day of my wedding to distract her. I actually really like that your family's backing you up. Kelly wasn't having it and posted to her Facebook about how it was unfair she wasn't invited. Oh, I see, looking for people to sympathize with you. My fiance understands she's like this and tells me to ignore it. I understand that Kelly won't change, but in the back of my mind, I feel bad and my thoughts get to me. So with that said, am I the a-hole? There's something to be said for just like not wanting to be around certain energies, especially like on the day of your wedding. I will tolerate bad energy, tolerate any other time than on the day of my wedding or on the day of like my birthday, for example. There is no way in hell that I am ringing in a new year or ringing in a new life surrounded by someone who doesn't want the best for me or isn't supportive of my decisions. And yeah, people might get upset that you don't want them there, but if that's the case, let's really think why we don't want someone there. We have a gander about why someone would choose to do that. It's probably not over nothing, probably not. Not the a-hole, just stand firm to family that she isn't close to you and you've picked your mate of honor. She sounds like she will use your day to create drama and that's the last thing you need. Do what's best for you and your fiance. Literally. It's not rocket science. She's basically telling you to choose between her and your maid of honor. And Bestie, that's not too hot of a choice based on what you're describing. Several points I wish to make in the comments. Add passwords to each and every vendor. From what you said, she would most likely try to make changes and that would not be pretty. Have security, prevent her at the entrance. Check with your local police to see if off-duty officers are allowed to be security. It sounds like your family's behind you. Literally, I really love that. They've seen this behavior as well and unlike other families on Reddit, they back you and not her. And that, my friends, says everything. You are not the a-hole, my dear. Subscribe!